Hi, my name is Gary Agnew. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Ideon Technologies. At Ideon, we're using the, the energy from supernova explosions in space to image down to a kilometer beneath the Earth's surface. And we're using that capability to help the world's largest mining companies uh, find new critical mineral deposits and also help mine those deposits in the most um, economic and environmental Guy, uh, good, good to have you on board. Thanks very much. Ex explosions in space. I'm already intrigued. Uh, can we put that in layman's language in terms of what problem are you trying to solve for your clients? Yeah, the problem we're trying to solve, Matthew, is geological uncertainty. Um, the world's exploration of mining companies explore the subsurface and today continue to use a, uh, a drilling uh, technology, 150-year-old drilling technology. Uh, what we're here to do is help them optimize uh, their investment in drilling by providing uh, subsurface imaging that uh, gives them a lot of understanding of the subsurface. Right. So there's, there's probably a few people, a few companies out there claiming to be able to do the same. Well, certainly in terms of the same, they're using the same words. What about the technology? Why is yours so different? Yeah, the technology we're using is called muon tomography. Muon tomography, uh, just in lay person terms, is really akin to medical imaging. And you think about a 2D uh, X-ray or a 3D CAT scan of the human body, our technique works in a very, very similar way. Um, the big difference that we offer compared to other geophysical techniques is we provide um, extreme locational accuracy. So when we image an anomaly in a 3D space, we can tell a client precisely where that anomaly is. And obviously that helps with precision targeting and precision mining as that asset gets um, developed. Okay, we'll get into the weeds with with, with me for a, a second. So, so can, can, we, can you explain that? Because saying we, we, you know, we're more accurate than others, what does that mean and how do you do it? Yeah, so the technology of using I mentioned, muon tomography, is a straight line imaging technique. Um, there is no other straight line imaging technique available uh, for the subsurface. And so what that means is we are measuring muon, as in, and muon is a subatomic particle, um, we measure your intensity and directionality on the ground. And from those uh, measurements, we can infer an average density of the uh, subsurface of the heart detectors. Then you, pr you provide your clients what? With, with, with a 3D model of, of this? Yeah. Of what you think is under the ground? Right, yeah, okay. It's exactly that. A 3D model of the area of interest that they have asked us to interrogate. And that model we deliver with 95% certainty. And what that means is with 95% confidence, the density anomaly we're imaging really exists in, in the subsurface. Okay, so I, I, I don't want to talk about the cursor folk, but I will later. I, I do want to talk about people like Arano, BHP, Glencore, et cetera, who you, you've, whose um, logos you've got on your website. So what exactly are you doing with them? How do you get them on board? What, what, what was well, that sales process like? Yeah, so uh, most of our clients, um, you know, the, the technology sounds a little bit far-fetched, and so they put us to the test uh, normally in our first engagement. That typically takes a fall of a blind trial, where the mining company will have you know, invested maybe 700 drill holes in an area of interest. Um, they don't give us any of that information. They ask us to go to work and uh, provide a 3D model. And then obviously they use that to confirm the um, imaging we provide, the accuracy and the uh, and definition of it. And really, once we have achieved that hurdle, that gives the mining company a lot more confidence. The technology is real. The results are, are meaningful in context of knowledge they already have. Um, and so that tends to move from a blind trial into successive deployments. Um, those deployments you know, range from brownfield exploration is a big area of focus, um, but also increasingly we're getting into mining operations where we're actually helping mining companies optimize the way they design and extract minerals in the future. Right. Okay. And so just, and just sticking with that. So, okay. Bl blind trials is one thing. And I, and I totally, uh, totally get that. It kind of val validates your technology with existing data and then go, the, these guys, okay. That's, that, that's what we saw too. Um, with the ongoing component, how, how many, okay. Let's start, how many clients do you have today? How many of those are have gone past blind trials or in, into a, a commercial relationship with you? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, eight active clients today, and all of those are either in a blind trial on the way to going past or have passed that blind trial phase. 
So um, yeah, certainly with the the majors we're working with, and um, we've got through those early hurdles and are building momentum here in, in the business. We call it land and expand, where we uh, land on a initial site, uh, build confidence there, and then expand it to successive sites. And that's the mode we're in with a number of our clients. Right, and is this technology um, is this technology better at finding s- different certain metals rather than others? Is it because obviously you've got Arano in there, and you've got Next Gen in there, the uranium, you've got BHP, Glencore, who probably more of the base metal. So, what's it good for? Yeah, yes, great, great question. And so, the way to categorize that: um, certain battery metals, uh, nickel, copper, cobalt. Uh, we have a very strong use case for. Um, uh, some base metals, so lead, zinc, and, and the like, and also uranium heavy metals. Um, and so, yeah, fortuitously for us, uh, those uh, minerals tend to have strong dense contrast with the surrounding earth. And ultimately, that's what our technology is imaging, is density signatures underground. And so the fact that those uh, mineralizations um, have density contrast makes it a sweet spot for our technology. Right, okay, and also... Uh, the the metals of the moment it, it, it seems between uranium and, and uh, battery metals. Um, let, let's just take an example of like w- one of the majors that you're working with. You, you talked about you know eight companies and you know a few that are have moved past uh, blind trials. If I, if I am if I'm a BHP or a Glencore or a Valley or whatever wor- working with you, say right, I've done the trial. That, you know, I'm not sure do they do they contribute to that trial? Yep. Or they do. Okay. You cover your costs. You wipe your nose on that one. The economic relationship is the interesting bit for me. How do you, you charge for this technology? Is it on a project basis? Is it on a licensing basis? Subscription basis? How, how do you do it? Yeah, it's a subscription basis. Um, when we took a look at the, uh, the subsets intelligence market, and you can put drilling companies, geophysics companies, et cetera, into to that broad category, uh, we found that actually there was quite a lot of uh, complexity in the commercial model left a lot of risk with the, the mining or exploration company to, to kind of figure it all out. And we see an opportunity to make that much easier for the customer. And so we, we describe it as a full stack solution. So we provide hardware, software, we deploy the field, we provide communications, power, and ultimately deliver the analysis and results. And so we wanted to deliver a solution that was all encompassing um, for the mining company to make it easier to do business with IDR. And so we're finding you know, we've had very, very good feedback on on that model, perhaps away from the complexity of from other providers, and gives the customer a very simple you know, six monthly fee to pay. They know exactly what they pay at the beginning of the engagement. They know how, what they pay all the way through. Right. Okay. And we've seen a few companies try it. Well, certainly come in um, using the the AI um, branding and say, right, we will take your data, we will analyze that, and we'll have a subscription model or have a license model, or we'll take a piece of the upside here on, on the project. It, it's, it's, it can be very convoluted and, and, and complicated. Yours is not a case of analyzing existing data. It is creating new data fresh. Um, so you know, if we don't mind popping back to the beginning of this conversation, how, do, how does it work? Do you, do you drill holes? Do you just a company drill holes, which the company uh, is, is doing or has, has done? How do, you, how do you get down there? Yeah. So yeah, the, the one of the few things we ask the customer to do is to look after the drilling of the hole or the prep of the hole. Now, I do want to be clear, more often than not, we are using existing drill holes. So we're leveraging investments that the company's already made um, but deploying our sensors um, down those holes. So yeah, we get the sensor deployed down hole. Our sensors have to be underneath the area of interest looking up towards the sky. And that's really the edgy source that we are passively uh, monitoring. Um, and then once we're deployed, we develop the 3D uh, model as, as described. Now, uh, you mentioned we are absolutely developing that new data, this high resolution, high certainty data set. But what we have also developed the capabilities to do is integrate other uh, data sets the customer already has. And we call that multi-physics inversion. So the customer has gravity or electromagnetic or seismic data sets that have invested in, in periods gone by. Uh, we can deploy me on tomography and integrate those data sets. Now, I'll go back to the straight line imaging uh, capability of our, our data set and the high resolution nature of it. It actually enables us to make better sense or to better interpret some of those other data sets than if they were just interpreted on their own. And so it's really a one plus one equals three type approach we're taking. Muon tomography brings the net new data set, a very powerful data set, 
we, we leverage the data sets the other uh, the customer already has, and we provide net new insights beyond the individual value of either of those two data sets on their own. Right. So it'll tell, and, and ultimately, you, you, so you said at the beginning, this, this will help them reduce the cost of their most expensive component of, of mining, which is drilling. Uh, certainly in the, in the early days and trying, trying to find stuff. So this is about targeting more precise drilling for them you, with the analysis of these data sets. And obviously that the more data you provide, hopefully the more accurate they get. So typically, you know, what do you suggest to a company? Say we, we, we need to, we need to go down a hole every what one kilometer, 10 kilometers. I mean, how, how far wide does this technology yeah. reach? Yeah, it really depends on what the customer is trying to achieve. And so the, the way we say it here at Ideon, the better we understand the customer problem, the better we can solve it. And so some customers are looking for very small objects close to surface. Other customers are looking for very large ob objects a kilometer into the earth. And so the, the, the benefit of the technology is we can design the, uh, the deployment uh, in such a way to optimize for the objectives the customer has on that particular site or in that particular area of interest. So... A lot of standard components, but the ability to select these standard components in a, in a particular way. Now, what is what is the value you were bringing to the customer? I think really was what was inherent in your question, Matthew. Um, you can bucket that into a, a few key heat categories. So, yeah, we can absolutely optimize the amount of drilling investment the client's making. So, a direct cost uh, saving investment, but also because of the high resolution, high certainty nature of the data we provide, we can enable the customer to recover more ore and leave more waste in the ground. And so that has huge benefits financially, but also from an environmental uh, perspective. And then thirdly, you know, we help accelerate the time from discovery to production. And particularly in this context we have with critical minerals, where there's a 500% a increase in demand required over the next 30 years, you know, what our major customers are talking to us about is how do we help them compress the value chain? How do we help them take years out of the process that is currently very drilling driven, um, but help them get you know higher level of understanding of the subsurface for a lower cost in a short time frame? And so really that's how we are helping the major mining companies really unlock um, the critical minerals we need for the energy transition. Right. But you need to put a dollar sign against each one of those components, well, each one of those variables. Well, you'd like to be able to do that, I suspect, because that'll affect your charging and your ability to continue to maybe you know ra raise the, pr the the price there as it as it becomes more and more valuable. So, how how do you go about doing that currently, and how do you see that moving forward? Because I, th I think all stories need a growth component here, and the growth's going to come from either c being able to continue charge more for what you're doing as you get a better sense of the value that you're delivering to, to clients or take more clients on in terms of scalability of this. Can you just, can you talk around that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, we, we see the opportunity to land and expand with the, the companies that we're dealing with, plus obviously some, some additional uh, ones. And so, uh, yeah, we, we, we want to be a partner to this company. We want to be the company that's at the table when they're designing their mind, planning out how they um, optimize and, and, and drive precision mining. Um, and so, look, we, we, we want to be a partner to the customer. And when you're a partner, that means that you've got to be uh, commercially uh, sensible. Uh, you mentioned some of the other business models out there that uh, really take in a, a piece of the upside, if you will, or, or, or actually some companies developing their own projects. And um, from an IDEON perspective, that's, that's not a place we, we see ourselves operating. We want to develop the best technology in the space. We want to deliver a customer experience, the second to none. And we want to partner with major mining companies. We don't want to compete with them. And therefore, we are very focused on being an outstanding technology partner uh, to our clients rather than you know, potentially being a threat or a, a competitive a dynamic in the, in the market with them. But, but to answer the dollar question, is like how, how do you work out what it's worth to that company and therefore what you what would be a reasonable percentage for you to charge? Or do you just say, actually, Let's not worry about that. Let's just go. We're going to cost plus basis and or time plus basis, however, however you want to do that, and that's good enough for us. Again, what, you, you, there's like 
there's a there's an arbitrage there. So how are you coming at it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, okay, so the the value that's at stake for our clients, I don't think it's reasonable for Ideon to um, expect to take a meaningful share of that value. Uh, major mining companies have invested billions of dollars in setting up the asset that is a, a mining operation, and it would be naive of us to think we can come in and grab a bunch of that uh, value once delivered. So we want to be pragmatic. Um, it's, it's not a cost plus. It's, it's more of a pragmatic. What is the market out there? How are others charging? What do we think the premium is uh, for the the role ID on complaint and the value the data uh, can offer? But look, we're, we're not in the game of taking a, a piece of the customer's uh, action uh, in terms of you know, value at stake. That's uh, they've, they've earned that right. Uh, we want to help them unlock it and get a reasonable recovery for doing that. Okay. Well, if it goes to, you're obviously a private company um, for now or maybe maybe in, into the future. So what do, you, what do you want out of conversations like this? Obviously, I'm intrigued because I love all this, this technology, these technology solutions and um, what it potentially could do to modernize this rather antiquated industry, essential but antiquated industry of ours. So what 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 are you looking to do? Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, create awareness. Uh, we're an early stage young company, an early stage company, and we've, we've made some good progress, but we are far from having cracked the nut that is mine. There's a lot more to do in terms of customer adoption to the, so to the extent that uh, potential clients are out there and, and interested in you know, high resolution, high certainty, a subset of human capability. We'd love to. We'd love to hear from them, and uh, and we'll be part of what we're in the future to to help optimize their uh, investments in the subsurface. Okay, and at the moment, so last question. So I, I I told you I'm fascinated by this stuff. Is one question with regards to the current use case for the technology? I understand what you've explained today. How does the product develop? Are, are there kind of bigger applications? Are there more uh, nuanced micro applications? And where do you, where do you see this technology going? Because I've, I've not heard um, of this te- technology before. Um, I'm just intrigued as to how you continue to monetize it, continue to evolve, um, and continue to expand your the universe of uh, your economic universe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a fascinating uh, landscape because we started in greenfield exploration and definitely proved the technology in that space. We're, we're laser focused on brownfield exploration and operation now. But in truth, there are system level problems across the whole mining value chain that our, that our solution can help solve. And so, again, we've been very customer centric. And there's certainly some key applications we're focused on, but to the extent our customers want us to go and solve, a major problem somewhere else in the value chain. That's what we're motivated to do. And that really is how we, we do build in the partnership with these clients over time, solving the problems that they care about. And as a result of that, I need on growing and, and increasing its, its adoption of the market. Right. Okay. And I'm going to stay away from the money side of things today. For, for, well, I, I push you a little bit, but I, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I would love you to come back and tell us how you're getting on with some of these bigger relationships and you know what you're doing with them, they're all most of them are public companies. So I think that would I think that would probably be a re- reasonable conversation to be had. But I think I referred to it earlier, and I'm definitely going to talk about it now. The curse of Oak Island. <laughs> what happens? You can tell us. There's no one listening. It's just just us. Um, so just us. Well, as you would expect, we're under pretty tight NDA with uh, for the Hollywood production company on uh, the curse of Oak Island. However. The new season starts uh, this week, and uh, the trailer, you do hear some uh, voiceover from a member of the Ideon team highlighting that we are imaging a high-density anomaly underneath the money pit. But I can't say any more than that. Can you suck me back in? I'm going to start <laughs> watching it again. Okay, uh, Gary, look, I appreciate, appreciate the time, and thanks for introducing the technology and the concept to us. And uh, stay in touch. Love new stuff like this, uh, and, and best of luck. Thanks very much, Matthew. Lovely chatting to you.